Thank you. I have a question to the Greek representative, which is like, why is Greece not joining BRICS and just leaving Euro? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat this? This was hard to be heard. Why is Greece not joining BRICS and leaves Euro, the Euro? I mean, since there is no way out of like changing either the system or, you know, they're going to kill you, why don't you leave the Euro and begin a new phase of revolution in Europe? Okay, uh, you know, this is a long-term uh, project. We cannot do it from the one uh, day to the other. And now, the, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are facing uh, um, a very short-term decision to take because to leave the Eurozone, to change the currency, it takes some a certain sti a kind of stability to do it. You cannot do it in... Uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in 10 days. It takes uh, an agreement. We are not given any kind of uh, time to do that. We are told uh, that we have to do in 10 days. We have, decide, we have to decide. And this is done uh, in order, because this is a political question, and it is done in order uh, not to encourage other people in Europe to challenge the politics of austerity. We have uh, elections in Germany, in uh, Spain, uh, in Portugal and Ireland next year. That means the countries that uh, has been, have been more affected uh, by the austerity policy, so they don't want to anybody else to dream about changing. Did I, <coughs> excuse me, did I understand well you said that leaving Europe was a long-term objective? No, no. Um, I didn't understand I, I, I well. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you mean Eurozone. Anyway, I, uh, it's not... Euro. It, it's, uh, Euro. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not talking about the Euro, all right? I'm talking about the Eurozone. And I'm saying that this is a strategic decision uh, ha has to be taken, but you don't have even the time to decide whether uh, you can do that in the, in the uh, not in the near future, but the long future, because for the time being, uh, you are in, a, uh, in the common, common uh, currency. Uh, it's very difficult to, to have, uh, to launch a new uh, currency without face, facing a, a bankruptcy. Uh, and uh, within the framework of uh, uh, multiple uh, menaces uh, uh, and uh, you know and, uh, and and blackmails. Please, can you pose your question? Oh yes. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mito Campos. I come from Spain, um, and uh, well, I've been pretty involved with uh, the popular movements back in Spain. And uh, well, thank you, obviously, to the Siller Institute for this opportunity. And for me, I'm just uh, like uh, right now, uh, like under the influence of drugs, just listening to people like the ones that uh, spoke right now, it's, it's giving me uh, new energy. Uh, having said this, uh, I have uh, obviously two questions. One is for the uh, Greek uh, uh, spokesman. Um, this system is madness, basically the uh, economic system that we are facing right now uh, is absolutely mad, uh, it has no rational meaning or no rational basis and the economy is absolutely out of control because somebody wants to, uh, uh, the economy to be out of control and we are trying to offer rational uh, uh, solutions to a system that doesn't have any rationality. So. I do ask uh, to the uh, Greek government actually why they don't um, 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 uh, out the, uh, audit the the debt in Greece, and why don't they just uh, you know take the uh, the um, the opportunity or take the chance 
to say no to Europe, basically because the uh, the 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 uh, austerity uh, measures are just killing people, thousands of people, and they are just destroying the economy. And then the other question would be to the maybe to the general um, and to the uh, analyst. Um, and the question is, Corvette. I don't. Sorry. Corvette. Cor Corvette, exactly. Uh, Corvette. Uh, the question is. We are facing four generation wars. Basically, we are facing the uh, wars in ideas or the info war. And I don't see basically neither France, neither Italy, neither Greece, or neither Spain uh, with a clear idea of what's going on. And when I talk about Spain or Greece, I talk about the people, the ones that are going to be asked to, uh, you know, the ones asked. Uh, to face the uh, austerity measures and also the ones who will be taking the uh, arms or will stand up in arms against Russia or against any other monster that the media will portray. We are under the influence of drugs. Why aren't, you know, these things uh, uh, really, you know, uh, 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 why, why don't we invest more money in uh, influencing the people? Thank you. Uh. You, you want to answer, please? Anyway, uh, well, uh, I'm repeating again that the, if, well, listen, if we had the, the possibility to go back on time and to uh, be back in uh, 1999 or 2000, when the decision to join the Eurozone has been taken, then uh, of course, who will, who will opt for uh, not entering the Eurozone. But uh, now, uh, there was other, another possibility, probably at 2009 when the crisis uh, started, then to, you, you could use, you know, the, you could leave the Eurozone when the country was still uh, strong uh, and uh, had a, another weapons economic uh, at its hands. But now, um, it's much more difficult to do it. Because what they have done is exactly to eliminate these dangers and to make it much more difficult for Greece to do it. For instance, all in the beginning of the crisis, the debt was towards the, some, the private banks. And uh, French and Germans, mainly. So what they did is they said, oh, we're going to save Greece. And, and instead, they saved the banks, and they transferred the debt from the hands of the private banks to the states. Now it's, it's France and Germany and the other countries of the Eurozone. They have, uh, <laughs> they, they have the, the, their, the, bonds, the Greek bonds in their hands, and the banks, the private banks, are the, were saved, you know. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the, the first, the, 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 the debt before the crisis was um, treated according to the uh, Greek uh, uh, legal system. That means in, in, any, conf in any conflict, Greek uh, courts will decide for the outcome of the conflict between the, uh, the creditors and, and Greece. Now, after the different memorandums, they, this, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, this right was transferred to the London uh, courts, which is much more favorable to the creditors than to the in-debt uh, uh, in uh, country. That's another problem. And the third is that the, the country is much more weakened right now. I mean, uh, you know, both politically and economically. So it's, it's very difficult to face uh, bankruptcy because uh, leaving the Eurozone, uh, it, will, uh, it, it will be that amount to, to bankruptcy for the time being. Probably uh, after three years, things uh, will be better. But how a government can sustain uh, such a pressure, you know, uh, having to handle a bankruptcy. That's the, the, the problem. Euh, je, je vais essayer de répondre à votre question, bien que je ne suis pas sûr de l'avoir bien comprise. 
je pense que vous parliez de la position de la France euh, euh, qui fournissait des armements en Russie. Let me answer on the question of but France who is giving weapons to the uh, to Ukraine. Let me say one thing. After having hurt our Greek friend, I believe the EU is on the border of falling apart, of being shattered into pieces, and in the weeks and months to come, There is a big crisis ahead because there are centrifugal forces increasingly bigger in, in this supranational organization. And we see that states inside the EU don't agree with their policy towards Russia. And I am also convinced that there are people in France, but also in other European countries, are not agreeing at all with the pressures put on the, on, on the Greek government. The problem is that we have a, a so-called genius of finance, which we have in, in, in Frankfurt, Mario Draghi, who will do everything possible to prevent that Greece leaves the Eurozone because he knows very well Uh, and the others also know it, it would be the end of the Eurozone and of the Uni European Union. So, through your question on the issue of weapons, I understand that states Today, the member states of the 28 member states of the European Union are under the leadership of political oligarchies which have been put into power by the principle that power is paying election campaigns, the financial interest. We have an oligarchy before M. Hollande. There was an oligarchy of Sarkozy behind Sarkozy. The uh, aspirations, the desires and wishes of the people are not represented by the governments who are leading these 28 member states. Dans la plupart de ces pays, But sont we, we même pour certaines, uh, public opinion is completely uh, tired and fed up, de want to get rid, rid of these governments which, which don't represent anything vis -vis de la with the people et donc, towards et Greece et or, or Russia. À l'intérieur de la France, par Inside exemple, France, il y a de plus en plus de groupes de pression. More and more pressure groups des messages à l'Élysée au gouvernement. Giving de message to the government to say this, this policy of sanctions against Russia is a total nonsense and should stop immediately. This is not covered by the media, and you know that the media is controlled by the international finance. International finance is backing these Atlantic, Atlantic policies. So this things are not put in the media, but the reality is different, and more and more people, and this sentiment will be more and more expressed to the degree that people are immediately uh, getting uh, <coughs> are subjected to the consequences of these crazy policies. It's not because uh, Dasso, Safran, Thales and others have sold some, some jet fighters. Sont contents de la politique que That doesn't mean they, they agree de vendre des mirages aux, aux with the policies de, uh, uh, allowing to sell these these, 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 de, de these weapons. Donc, But that's not public opinion. À, à un moment de, so I think uh, de, de, we're at a moment Et enfin, which is right before the crisis. Sur cette histoire, And to come back que Hollande, uh, on the, I, to know if, if Ms. Hollande and Merkel, oui, je crois, if they sent uh, weapons to Ukraine, so-called non-lethal weapons, mais, uh, I think they do so because they are prisoners of this Euro system and the European system, which, uh, which uh, small states like the Baltic 
states or Poland which are hostile towards Russia, with U.S. backing, to the things simply, it's right now the U.S. which is ruling the European Union and which is uh, pushing this connection between the U.S. and the EU policies. Donc, euh, la France et l'Allemagne sont Germany, obligées, c'est ce que j'ai dit dans mon euh, introduction, dans mon intervention, obliged, euh, la France et l'Allemagne sont obligées de se conformer à la loi qui régit le fonctionnement de l'Union Européenne. Mais, comme je l'ai dit, je pense que ça ne va pas être éternellement. Mais Yes, thank, thank you very much for that. So um, we now have to come to a conclusion of this panel, but before we do that, I would like to ask Mrs. Helga Zepp-Larouge from the German side to comment on what we have been discussing here. And then, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Kolo-Glu has to leave. So please, Helga, uh, yes, please come here. Um, I think that that is the moment of truth of this conference. I mean, this is the reason why we wanted this conference at this point, because it is very clear that if you reflect on everything which was said today, the war danger will increase with the threat to Greece. And I think the Greek government has made the point many times, this is not a Greek crisis, this is a crisis of all of Europe, and actually of the whole transatlantic world, because if Greece is pushed out of the Eurozone in a chaotic way, the whole derivative bubble will blow. And it is also true that they want to make a bloody example of Greece because they do not want Spain, Italy, Portugal to follow this way. So we are in a situation where the war danger will increase as the Greek crisis accelerates. And the reason why we had this conference is because an alternative is already in existence. And I'm really calling upon all of you to take the idea of this conference that we must get Europe to join the BRICS uh, as the only way. And I want to ask you to go into a mobilization, contact your deputy, your mayor, your city council, your circle in which you are, and get a discussion that this is the only way out of the crisis. Because as much as, you know, I would think it would be good if Greece joins the BRICS, that would be easy, it would be no problem. The problem is this increases the war danger. And I think the wisdom of the win-win policy is that it has to be inclusive, that it has to be an, a peace order which solves the problem of every participating country in the world, that must guide us. Because you know, it's not, you know, if you are a radical, you would say, let's just leave these oligarchs. They should go to hell where they belong. But that doesn't solve the problem. And I would really think that the uh, in, uh, inclusive solution that we must use this, and I really, you know, I don't think the European population knows anywhere where we are. They are sleepwalking into a catastrophe, and somebody, some, one of the speakers said that we could kill ourselves in a monstrous act of annihilation. And that is where we are at. So I think that we have to really go into a mobilization. As I said, this is not an academic conference, but this is a conference to mobilize the peoples of Europe to try to change the policy in the short term, because the alternative, if we are not doing that, you know, I agree with Mr. Corvey, you know, the EU is finished. I mean, there is no way how this construct, this, this monstrum, will survive. The only question is, can we get an orderly way out of it? And can we get, prevent chaos? Because apart from war, the second, maybe equally big danger is chaos. Because if the world plunges into chaos, you know, think about what happened in Albany uh, in 97 when the pyramid scan, uh, scheme collapsed. For six weeks you had chaos and only after the Italian carabinieri came in from the outside to reestablish order, somehow the situation could be solved. But this time 
we don't think that the population of Mars will come to save us on this planet. Uh, I mean, it has not been reported to be so populous. Uh, so I think we have to really, you know, and I would like people to contact their respective liaison of the Schiller Institute, because this must be an international mobilization where, you know, the Chinese character for crisis is also the, 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 the sign for, for chance. So I think that that is what we have to do. We have to go out of this conference with a full mobilization to get the world in a safe place, and that is the win-win conception. And you know, I think it will get turbulent, but better that than being dead at the beginning. <laughs>